Welcome this morning to Caleb Church of God. We are excited that you're in the house of the Lord today with us. We have so much to praise the Lord for. We're excited that we can come into his presence and be here and to be able to magnify his name and to be able to meet corporately together. And I was listening this morning as the um, I was hearing about California, how they've opened up their churches to only 25% that they cannot sing. And I was like, wow, we just have the privilege and the opportunity to be able to sing praises unto the Lord. And God, don't let us take that for granted in the name of Jesus, but let us go forth and to praise you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. We're going to kick off this morning with a song, and it kind of talks about Psalm 145, verses 18 to 19 says this, The Lord is near to all who call on Him. To all
we just we thank you that we are here in the house of the Lord. We thank you for the privilege to come into your house and and we just pray that you would just bring your spirit. Bring your spirit in this place. If we can't meet with you, why are we here? It's all about you, Jesus. Glorify your name. We glorify you, Jesus.
let's get all the time and all the time the Lord is good. This past week, Brenda and I got our uh, Moderna injections. Not bad for the first, that's the first of two. Yeah. Not bad for us. But God's good, and we're just excited about the Lord and His grace toward us. You know, when we think about Christ living in us, and that's what the Bible talks about, is that it is the Lord in me. Paul used, the Apostle Paul used the expression, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Well, what takes place when Christ lives in us? That's what we're going to look at is when Christ lives in us. And the text will be Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Can we stand together again for the reading of the Word of God? This is the New King James Version. Praise the Lord. There, the Bible says, the Apostle Paul just sharing his testimony and what he has experienced himself. He's speaking out of his experience. He said this, I wrote this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, that is Jesus Christ, who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for us. When Christ lives in us, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for the, the word of God that will set us free, Jesus said. And it is truth that leads us to truth. And, we, and it gives us wisdom. For the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We can have great knowledge and yet not really have wisdom, especially in terms of eternal things and eternal life. And we thank you, God, for your work in our hearts and lives. This passage of Scripture, this one verse, deals with what you do through the Holy Spirit in us and through the Word of God at work in us. And we thank you for the privilege that we have to be able to, to say with the Apostle Paul when we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior that now we are crucified with Christ and it's no longer us who lives but it is Christ lives in us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and you may be seated. The application Bible notes says this, that the focus of Christianity is on living, not on dying. Paul uses this expression of dying with the Lord. I'm crucified with Christ, he said. And that deals with the fact that for, for the Lord's will to be done in your life, you have to actually put to death in that moment or that instance the you know the your own human will. The human will of Christ did not want to go to the cross and did not look forward to the torture and, and the death. He did look forward to the resurrection. And but when he was looking at the cross in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Father, you know, finally got to the place, Father, not your will be done, but mine. For you to be able to say that, Christ has to live in you. And that's what it takes. That is life changing when Christ lives in you. And the, and the Life Application Study Bible notes, goes on to say, because we have been crucified with Christ, we have been, we've also been raised with Him, raised with Him spiritually in this life, and then raised to immortality, immortality in the life to come. And somebody said this, that living for Christ is real living. And I've shared this a number of times, but before I got saved, I used to wonder, what is it that Christians really do? I, I just couldn't imagine. Whatever they did, what could they possibly do? Well, after I don't know how many food projects that we've distributed, and after so many uh, different <clears throat> fundraising campaigns, and, and so many different projects or, or ministries that we help, support and that list goes on and on uh, i found out what what christians do we change the world for the glory of god we make the world a better place the people who oppose christianity and that in the united states you have freedom you should have at least freedom of speech and freedom of religion you should have that uh, but people who oppose us 
Uh, many times it's about types of lifestyles. They want to live the way they want to live. Do not want to have to answer to God. In this world, you may not have to answer to the Lord. But the day is going to come. Uh, just as surely as one day passes to another day. That day is going to come. That all are going to stand before God and give an account of the way they live their lives. And we look forward to the day when we will be with the Lord. We have a hope and something to look forward to. Outside of Christ, just when we exist naturally uh, and not living the eternal life that is really found in Christ, life looks a lot different. I read that on a wall near the main entrance of the Alamo in San Antonio, and I have been there, I don't remember seeing this, but I'm not sure when this was written. There in San Antonio, Texas, there's a portrait that bears the following inscription. James Butler Bonham. No picture of him exists. The portrait is of his nephew, Major James Bonham, deceased, who greatly resembled his uncle. It is placed here by the family that people may know the appearance of a man who died for freedom. No literal portrait exists of Jesus. But we can see Jesus in the image of the people who do His work and whose will. May, may God help us to live in such a way that when people look at us, they won't see us, they'll see Jesus. One of the favorite little stories that, that I read was one of uh, 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 this great Reformation leader, Martin Luther. Someone came one day looking for him and knocked on his door. He comes to the door and they ask, does Martin Luther live here? And he replied, no. Martin Luther is dead, but Jesus lives here. That's letting the, the, the image of Christ shine in your life. When Christ lives in us, what do we have? First of all, we have true purpose for living. You know, when I was younger, I got saved in my 20s unexpectedly and wasn't particularly wanting to be saved. But Brenda prayed and asked it for me and I got under a terrible conviction. Could have made a choice to reject the Lord or accept the Lord and I made the decision just based on logic to accept Christ. And that's what I did. But it changed my life. And I found out what true life really is. And I cannot imagine now a life without worshiping the Lord. A life without reading and hearing the Word of God. And now, because I'm called to preach, preaching the Word of God. Yes. In Philippians chapter 121, the Apostle Paul looked at his life. And he said, for me to live is Christ. And in Galatians 2.20, he explained kind of what that means. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And, and the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. It's amazing when you look at, at what the Bible talks about. When you come to the Lord, you're going to experience these verses that you find in the Word of God. They're going to come off that page and you're going to find out that they now are part of who you are. I remember when I first got saved that I was reading the Bible through basically the New Testament to begin with. And I would get to these places and say, that's me, old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Oh, that was me. That, was, that, that book, the Bible was writing about me. It wasn't about words that you can read but it's actually something you can experience. I remember when I was really high, floating around in the clouds of the Spirit, that he sanctified, filled with the Spirit. I was just in the, you know, like you are in the cloud if you've been there and done that. Not everybody is, but I did. It was wonderful. It was great. It didn't last, but while it lasted, it was great. I, I got, came back down to earth. And, I, I, and at the same time, we were in the Sunday school class, and I don't remember if I was teaching that class or who was teaching it. They were talking about the Spirit springing up within you as a well 
of the living water. And it wasn't, I don't think, talking about where Jesus was talking about that in the New Testament. But I am telling you, they were reading it. Nobody in the class probably experienced it, but I could feel this living well of water moving in my spirit, in my soul at that very moment. Those places in the Bible are not just there so you can read them and say, isn't that wonderful? These people are literally writing out of their experience. This is what they experienced. This is what happened to me. And if that's happened to you, the Lord changed your life and God did a work in your spirit and your soul. God delivered you. God helped you. God helped you walk through the valley of the shadow. How can we not praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You probably of 9-11. I remember seeing that in a Burger King off of 75. We were probably going to the hospital that day or something. And, and I remember, I thought it was science fiction. They must have it on the science fiction channel, but it's the real deal. You, Most of us, we read about it or we see about it on television or something like that. On the front row was Sister Minnie Dolan, who lived in New York City for 30 or 40 years in banking. She was in New York City just blocks from where the World Trade Center fell down. There's nothing she can see on TV very much that would really help her to understand what that was like because she was already there. She experienced it. Well, that's how the gospel works in people's lives. It's when we experience, we have Christ living within us and when He lives in us, there's going to be a change because the Lord When Christ lives in us, we have a perfect pattern for living. You want to know how to really live a successful life? Jesus Christ lived the most successful life that's ever lived on earth. You can follow Muhammad, and you can follow uh, Confucius, and, and you can follow all these other leaders, Hare Krishna, uh, but all of them have graves. Let me tell you about a leader who does, he may have had a grave, He's not there. Amen. He is seated right now, right this moment, no matter when. Here we are in the sanctuary, no matter when people see this or listen to this. Jesus is seated at this very moment at the right hand of the Father in heaven. If you read it in the Word of God. Keyword mind, what's that talking about? The mind, what does that deal with? Well, in the Amplified Bible, we can find a little more about that. In Philippians 2 5, the Amplified Bible, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. That is, let him be. Your example in humility. Sometimes we're not too good at that, especially if we lack patience. This is the message Bible, Philippians 2 Bible. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He told me, Well, I didn't come to do my will. I came to do the will of him who sent me. There is God the Heavenly Father. Jesus did become just like us. He said he was perfect and he never sinned. Jesus came to earth and was born a little baby of the Virgin Mary. But he knew what his mission was and he became a servant. He humbled himself. That's how you crucify your will. Not my will be done but yours. 
a good prayer to pray is let your will be done in my life and your kingdom come in my life just like it is in heaven. Easy to pray. Hard to see it work in your life that way. He became obedient to the Father's will, even dying on the cross for the sins of the whole world. My sins, your sins. And he gave us this pattern or example to follow. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, God's Word version, very good version of the Bible. Those who say they live in Him must, somebody say must, must, must live the same way He lived. That's one of those verses that are easy to read and hard to put into practice sometimes. And then what a difference it makes. We think sometimes that if we do certain outward things, people will see us and they'll think, well, that's a Christian. One of the cartoons I put in the newsletter were these people, and they were arguing, this husband and wife were arguing. Any husbands and wives ever argued all the way to church before? And you come in, you know, and it's all upbeat. You'll have to preach when you do that. It's fine. And uh, it's not, but you can do it. Brother Brian and I, you know, it just goes with it. Whoever, whoever it is, who sings, who plays, you have to keep going. You do the work of God. These people are arguing in this car. And you could tell their hands were waving and they're angry. And finally, one says to the other, because this car has got on the back of their bumper, honk if you love Jesus and all these other things. One of them finally says to the other, well, don't worry about us arguing because they'll know we're Christians by our bumper stickers. Well, it might take a little more than a bumper sticker. It might be a good place to start, amen. Listen, when, when Christ lives in us, the third thing is this. We have price, prizes, or we might call it better, rewards. Prize is in, that word is actually in the Bible. This is the new King James Version of Philippians 3, 14. This is, this is when Christ lives in you and you don't want your will to be done. or You, don't, you might want your will to be done, but you don't do your will. It's just like tomorrow morning is Monday. Most people start off their work week on Monday. Brenda and I did that for 20 years before we went full time in the ministry. Monday was the first day of the week. At, at that time, I was driving 64 miles past three uh, and going there every every Friday night, most Friday nights, and we were there Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. And we spend that time there, get home late Monday night, go to work Monday. And then we would be back up there on Wednesday. It was three or four nights in Douglas and the other three or four nights in the rest of Georgia. Now, I'd have to go back to work to rest. And 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 then Philippians 3.14. You know what? I just I don't know if this is true. I am just going to imagine it's possible that some people might not look forward to going to work on Monday. I'm just I have been there and done that. The ground is level. A lot of people like that. That's your first day of the week. But you know what you do? You get up and you go to work regardless of whether you feel like it or not. Because if you don't go to work, I have a feeling the magic will stop. And Thursday or Friday or whatever day you get paid, I just can imagine that they may not pay you if you don't want to show up. So we don't worry about our will. We don't care if it's cold outside, if it's raining outside, whatever it is, whatever kind of situation we're having to manage, we get up and go to work anyway. That's, the, that's what living for the Lord is like. It's not about what you feel like doing, and it's not about what you want to do, but you do what you do because you love the Lord and you are faithful to God. Well, if you do that, just because, just the way you get up and go to work, whatever day you get up and go to work, the first day of the week, the rest of the days of the week, uh, no matter what day that is, the news is there is a reward for that. And there's also a reward when you serve God and the rewards are out of this world and there is a prize. In the Bible, there's a prize to win. And, uh, and I just feel like praising the Lord today. New King James Version. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Like so 
somebody wrote a song based on a song. Lord lifted me up on higher ground. Amplified Bible 314 Philippians. I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize in which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. Calling us upward. Uh, Colossians 3 1. Set your affections on things above. On you come, this upward call. Setting your affections, your heart, on those things which are above. Joyce Myers, the, the, the Everyday Life Study Bible said this. The devil wants each of us to concentrate on how far we have fallen. Have you messed up any time since you ever walked with the Lord? Welcome to the club. Once, I've got to read this and not say anything else if I could, if I could possibly do that. The devil wants each of us to concentrate on how far we have fallen rather than how far we have risen. The fact that you're in the house of God or you're watching this speaks well of moving in the right direction in your life. Amen. I've got to continue here. He wants us to think about how many times we fail rather than how many times we succeed. goes on to say, but God wants us to focus on our strengths and not on our weaknesses, our victories, and not on our losses, our joys, and not on our problems. And that's dealing with Philippians 3.13. And when we look at that passage of Scripture, when we talk about, when we talk about pressing forward, moving forward, always moving forward, moving forward, get up, you get up and get in. If you fall, get up again and keep going. You have to get up again and keep going. Get up again and keep going. That's how Abraham Lincoln would win wrestling matches. Somebody said he wouldn't stay prone. You can throw him, but he wouldn't stay prone. Thank God for people that don't stay prone spiritually. Get up, move forward, keep getting up, keep moving forward. And the devil has no defense against that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, New Living Translation back to the prize. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs? But only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Except every child of God gets the prize of eternal life. There are prizes and rewards awaiting God's faithful children. This is Matthew 16, 33. Today's English version used to be the good news Bible. For the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he will reward each one according to his deeds. According to what you have done, whether it was for the Lord or not. You want to live for the devil all your life? Some people choose to do that. They choose to die in that condition. Not good. We, we would encourage you not to do that if you, that's how you live. But the Bible says clearly here that one day Jesus Christ, and here it uses the expressions of about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. He's going to reward every individual, every man, woman, possibly every boy in your world. But you want to live in such a way that Christ lives in you. Then you can write, or then you can say, rather, what Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, a young pastor. Paul was saying, looking ahead, looking, pressing forward to the prize. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown. A crown. There are different crowns in the Bible. Crowns represent the Lord. Honor, prestige. Amen. This is the New International Version. Honor, 
of 2 Timothy 4.8. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, the last day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed. Some Bible, some Bible versions may use the phrase love, who have loved or longed for his appearing. There are five crowns in the Bible. If I had time, I'd preach on that. I don't have time. They are the incorruptible crown that will be given to those who have achieved victory over this world and the devil. There's a crown of rejoicing. Oh, that's in 1 Corinthians 9, 25. The second crown is the crown of rejoicing. This is given to people who win souls for Christ. In 1 Corinthians 2, chapter, excuse me, 1 Corinthians Thessalonians 2, 19, Paul said to these people there in the church at Thessalonica, you are my, the crown of rejoicing. Then there's the crown of life. And that's given to those who endure pain and are still remain faithful to God. In, you know, in, in sort of the sacrificial way that martyrs die for the cause of Christ. Not just under the Roman government, but currently under the Chinese, communist Chinese government in Iran and in other places as well, put to death. Militant, Islamist, extreme people kill tens or more Christians at the same time. It's not good. These people could renounce their, their salvation and, and, and convert to whatever religion it is, except in communist nations, their anti-religion. And, and, but they won't. They choose to die for the cause of Christ. And then there is, fourthly, the crown of glory. That's a special crown that will be given to the shepherds. Uh, I guess like me in that group, the chief shepherd appears. You will receive the crown of glory in 1 Peter 5, verse 4. And fifthly, there is the crown of righteousness. It's given to those who held on to the hope they have in the coming of Christ. The coming of Christ. Somebody said here some time ago that they loved the messages that I preached on the return of Christ. Just the idea, it's a thing, it's just what it is. Listen, I've got a quiz, our musicians kind of come. Listen, when Christ lives in us, we have power for living. You're living to live for the Lord successfully. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Isaiah 40, 29, in the King James Version, the Bible talks about what God does for His people. He giveth power to the faint to, and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. And Paul wrote in Romans 8, 37 through 39, when he lists a lot of different problems and trials and adversities, we're more than conquerors in all these things. I read about this painter, that you may not know his name, but you've seen his painting of a certain name. When Holman Hunt told his artist friends he intended to paint Christ, they said it would be impossible. They said, you can paint only what you can see. It cannot be done. But I'm going to see him, Hunt replied. I will go to Gethsemane. For he prayed in the garden until his sweat became great drops of blood. I will travel with him to Calvary and climb the cross with him until I see him. I will paint him. Out of that came a painting called The Light of the World, showing Christ knocking at the door of a home or a house. 
with no outward door knob on it. It's actually knocking at the door of heart, human heart, trying to gain entrance. And that pain you've ever seen is unforgettable. When Christ lives in us, there's going to be a difference in a good way. Let's stand together, if you will. Let's pray right where we are. Thank you for being here. Father God, thank you for your grace toward us today. Lord, as we go through the rest of this Sunday and into the coming week, no matter what day it might be, oh God, may Christ live in us, who is the hope that we have for and eternity. But I pray, Father, if there's someone who struggles trying to follow you, they try, but they keep messing up, and they try. Messing up and trying. You can never give up and give it right. The good news is there's victory when you just don't want to stay down. Keep getting up, keep going forward spiritually, keep doing the best you can. And I would believe that through time, as we learn how to manage seasons in our lives better. That will be more and more successful. And end up when it's all said and done. And the, the prize or the reward, the prizes and rewards are given out, the crowds are given out. That as Jesus said, got a kind of a parable in the New Testament. That we will hear the words. Well, good. I believe what the Bible says. Today is the day of salvation. I might not have been any part of this particular day that I preach this or the day when this may be listened to or watched. And I thank you the day that we call upon your name, repenting and turning from our sins, as imperfect as we are and will be, that you will be saved. Thank you.